All right, so to help keep this video short, this is going to be part one of probably three different videos related to resource mon monitoring, those types of things. So what I have open in front of you on your screen is my task manager for my computer, and you can see there is a lot going on there. All right, um, for those who don't know how to get there, if you just right click on your task bar, and you have task manager as one of those options and that is how I traditionally bring up my task manager. You can also normally do a control alt delete and task manager will be an option there if that is how you prefer to get there. But I almost always go from my start menu unless my computer has hung up on me. Then that's a different game. Now when you first start you may only see this, this little short window if you haven't opened task manager before and tried to go on for the more detailed approach. All right. This is all you truly need as a, as a user to close out of stuff that you don't know what's going on or why it's frozen, those type of things. You can just right click or click on one of these and you can say end task. You can right click and say end task or switch to, but um, overall, all you normally use task manager for, at least from a, you know, say a, a normal person's point of view, is going to be for closing out programs that aren't responding. However, in this class, we need a bit more information sometimes, and that is where that more details option comes in. And that starts spitting out a crap load of information. So as you can see, these top six under apps, if we sort by name, all right, those are the ones that are normally, that are not normally, those are the ones that we saw in the fewer details area. So actually I only have five of them listed here. Chrome, uh, management, Microsoft Management, Office, Word, and OBS. Oh, Task Manager is also listed on here. All right. Um, so, and then we have all my background processes, and if we scroll down, you can see that I have a lot of stuff going on in my background, so not something that we need to worry about. We do have some columns here, which is very nice. So you do have a status column by default, which tells you if something's not responding or frozen. We do have our CPU usage, which you can see I am at roughly 9% right now of total process utilization across all of my cores. Um, in a few minutes, we'll see what my CPU looks like. We have 46% of my memory being used, 1% of my disk, and this is, again, across all physical drives. I have three different hard drives, I believe, in this computer, so there's, you know, lots of disk there. We've got our network. I have a GPU section. I have a 1070 uh, graphics card in here, so I've got a good GPU. And we have our power usage overall, what's going on, and then power usage um, over time, so... Uh, some interesting things. You can add a few more columns here. You have publisher if you're looking for the PID or the process name or command line related stuff. So you could add more columns to this if you wanted to. Now, um, so the CPU column, as I said, uh, across all the cores of your PC is being used. If your computer is being very slow, you might want to come in here and look at this specific column so we can actually sort by it. And you can see for me that OBS is using my most of my CPU right now. OBS is what I'm using to record this. All right. Um, if I go ahead and let's say open up AutoCAD, let's see what happens there in a few minutes. All right. You can see AutoCAD we're at 4%. Oh, now we're up to 10. So you can see how it's like kind of spiking and it probably might die back down now, now that we're up and running. So you can see we were dropped back down again. So OBS is active re actively recording right now. So that's probably why that one is using the most percentage of my CPU. Memory, again, how much memory we're using, percentage, network. All right, I'm at 0% megabytes right now. Um, if we go ahead and open up a window, and I'm just going to do a large file download test. Um, I've done this before. You can download a, there's a, there's a one gigabyte file download that you can test download. So if I go ahead and start downloading that, I want to keep it. I want to download anyway. You'll now see my network goes up to 5% and we're at 48.1 megabits per second. All right. And that is about what I expect to see as we have about 50 megabyte down connection speed here. So um, probably we were about peaked out on max usage right there. Now at the same point, um, uh, this is me and my wife at home. So my wife might be doing something and using up the last little bit of internet. And that's also why you might see some some um, drops there is because you know someone else is starting to do something else not on this computer streaming Netflix watching YouTube who knows whatever it is so kind of a fun little fact there now I can go ahead and I can cancel this now the other thing that we can I can quick do for fun is if I go to my server located about you know, three feet from me basically 
If I go ahead and copy a video off that, here is a 1.4 gigabyte video file. Let me just go ahead and throw it in my downloads. That seems like as good a place as, eh, let's go to documents. If I put that there, you should see my network usage actually go much higher. Oh, we're still only sitting in that 41 megabits. Let's see what this is claiming. See, this is saying 102. There we go. Oh, there. That was 800. Sorry, I missed it. Let's try that again. Paste that. Let's sort by network. There you can see Windows Explorer, 835 megabits. I have a 1 gigabit or 1,000 megabit connection between my desktop and my server. So you can see you know, just a difference of what's going on from a local transfer on a high-speed network compared to an over-the-internet transfer which is kind of nice. You do have a performance, which does give you graphs. Now, typically, um, you normally overhaul just the overall graph shown on your computer. Um, that is kind of the, the default one that you are going to see. Um, we do have, so you have CPU, you have your memory, again, um, and this is telling you a lot of information about your CPU. We're turboing up to 4 gigahertz almost at some points, and our base clock is 3.7. Um, I've got about six and a half gigs of my 16 available. You can see my three different hard drives. You can see my Ethernet. And again, if I go ahead and copy that file, you shall see this is spiking, basically. And they're telling you the one gigabit per second max. And, you know, that's the, the scale. And you can see how we're just basically maxing out my download there. Um, now, again, if we go back to Chrome and we go ahead and try to download this file again. Let's go ahead and keep it. Again, you'll see that it's, you know, it's it's using it. We're at 50 megabits de down, all right? But it's not nowhere near as high as that one gigabit connection that we had going for a little bit there. Um, and that does break your GPU down into different sections, again, so you can kind of see what's going on. Um, and memory, again, you can kind of see some different types of what's going on, how much we have in use, we have committed, our, our paged pool of 841 megs, non-paged. Available, you know, all information is there. CPU, I always like to look at the logical processor so you can see each what each core or each processor, each no, not core processor, oh yeah, well, we're going on logical processors here. Uh, each logical processor is doing. So my desktop, I have an 8700K, as it tells you up here in the top right hand corner of what you guys are seeing. Um, and I have six cores, 12 logical processors, so that's why we have 12 different threads going on, or not threads processors going on there. Now we also down here have 3585 threads going on and a thread is a single processor task executed by a process. Um, most processes can use two or more threads at the same time to speed up execution. All right. So it's just a little bit of code that's running and it's basically what's getting scheduled to run. So it's saying, okay, I, have, I need to do this and I need to do that. And the computer is trying to handle all those different threads and answer all of the different requests and do all that stuff at once. We also, if you notice right next to that, have handles. And I have 128,000 handles. All a hander is is a pointer to a resource. So it's just basically saying, hey, this information that you're looking for is located in this location. And it's just a little text file, basically, that's saying that. Um, so if a process wants to use a particular service offered by a particular object, the process asks the object for a handle to that service. So it's basically saying, hey, I need this information. And that process is going, OK, here's the information. And then we're calling it a handle to make life simpler. So, in a nutshell, uh, that's your, your probably your two most used tasks in here. We do have our app history, which is, you know, all the different apps and things like that going on and kind of tells you what we're using. Um, it's a very good idea to go through your startup list to see what is actually slowing your computer down at boot, and you can enable and disable things in here. We have our users tab for who's logged on and how much processes and things like that they are using. We also have our details, so this gives us a lot more information about specific items, and they also have stuff related to services. So overall though, that process and the performance, especially the process tab where you can see that, oh, this one's using Chrome. I'm using almost one gigabyte of memory just for Chrome. Now this says I have 30, 23 instances of Chrome, um, even though all I have is one window that has six tabs open and one window that has four tabs. So I should have 10 different instances for that and I have another 13 for who knows what, um, which can make troubleshooting kind of fun. All right, but if you ever see um, a process using all of your CPU constantly, that's probably a little bit of a warning factor there that you might wanna get looked at. Same thing with your memory. If your memory is constantly absolutely filled 
might be something that you want to look into. Um, it may be that some processor is um, actually needs all of that amount of memory. Um, let's go ahead and open up AutoCAD again. We'll just let that run in the background um, so we can see about the memory use there. Um, so it may be that that program actually needs that much memory. All right. Or it could be that that memory, that program has a memory leak to it. And basically memory leaks occur when a program creates a memory in a heap, in a group, and then forgets to delete it. So it's saying, hey, I need all this memory. And then it goes, well, yeah, okay, I don't really need that anymore, but it doesn't do anything with it. Um, years ago, you actually were suggested to overall close or shut your computer down once a day or once every other day and let it sit completely off for a few minutes so that way everything in memory would be completely forgotten because ram as we should know by now is a volatile memory which means if it loses power it forgets what it knows all right so it may take a little bit of time for those capacitors in your ram to actually discharge and forget everything which is why it's import was important to let your computer sit and just behave there Nowadays, Windows has gotten pretty good at using, or at least behaving with um, your RAM and doing a good job managing it, which we're gonna talk about in our next video. All right, that's it for a quick kind of walkthrough of Task Manager.